this a hymn? Oh, doggy, a time. Oh, doggy, a time. I became interested in the uh, National Congress American Indians when my father returned from Denver, Colorado in 1944. I told my mother I went to this grade meeting and you know, began to talk about meeting tribal leaders and the concerns that the tribe had. And I've been involved in uh, NCAI since 1973. My mother had a letter. It was an invitation for the charter members so my mother said, here, you like things like this. I got on a Greyhound bus at Dallas, Texas, with $35 in my pocket. I went to my first convention. And uh, I appreciate the fact that I'm still asked to do things. And I hope I can do them. <laughs> that's all I can hope. But that's my commitment. It's the memory of my father and how, how they were um, excited about this great thing that's happening for Indian country, and it's still here. Greetings from the homelands of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde. For all of you walkers, for the canoe family, for the people who came on horses, thank you for doing that, and let's all know as we step into the future, we have to remember that we're going to leave a path. We're going to make a path for our, our, the generations to follow. It's important that that's a good path, that, that the footprints that we leave honor those um, ancestors that came before us. They left a path for us. They made tremendous sacrifices for us to, to enjoy things that we enjoy today. If you look around here, what, what we're doing today, you see the building and all that stuff behind you? That's what we do. That's not who we are. The people you see here, the people around here in, the, in our, our traditional dress, that's who we are. We are Indian people, we're sovereign nations, and we'll be here forever. This is an important time for us to come together, share ideas, uh, look at how we can help one another. The whole purpose of, of NCAI uh, is, is to work together to develop these relationships among our nations so that we can support each other. The first order of business is to post the colors. Color guard, post the colors. The value of NCAI is having as many people as possible to come and debate the issues. And that's what creates the richness of the structure. So we encourage more tribes and more people to participate in NCAI because that's where the richness and the value comes. When we can come together with all of our diversity, all of our differences from the communities that we represent, small or large, rich or poor, and come up with what's that common agenda. A lot of the things that come through uh, your different regional organizations are expressed in resolutions, whether it be health care or law and order or even veterans issues. And then from there, we bring it here to NCAI and we meet in committees and the committees review them and then they vote on what resolutions to pass through there, in other words, to bring forward to a higher level. All those in favor of motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, abstention, motion carries. The National Congress of American Indians comes from a long history that, that, that came out of the threat of our sovereignty and our unique um, existence, our, our unique uh, relationship with the United States government that, that transcended before this country was a country, and it was in the threat in the, in the 40s. Those threats have continued on. The American society and its political system has tried to undermine that relationship. And, and, and now, over the years, um, NCI has gotten stronger and stronger and stronger and more effective. I want to come see what's happening at NCI because uh, it's local. I'm from Warm Springs, Oregon, 105 miles southeast of here. So I, I want to take advantage of, of the opportunity to see what our tribes are doing nationally to impact Indian country. I want to close by talking about what I see as the most important opportunity, and that is young people. 
The median age in the United States is 43 years old. Indian country, on the other hand, has a median age of 30. We can't afford to waste anymore. We just don't have any time. We need to make sure that every youth is given opportunities and laid out a course for their success. And we have to do it fast. I mean, we have this really short window. Um, but it's a marvelous window if we take advantage of it. So there's been a growing number of youth in Indian country that are getting involved. Um, lots of our kids in different communities are coming together to join the youth councils and they're doing lots of community service projects in their communities, uh, just wanting to learn more about who they are and that's just a really amazing thing and I think probably testifies to why there's more youth coming out to important conventions like this and making sure that they're part of the conversations as well. And as I was talking to the youth this week, the youth said, I need to know our history. I need to be able to know what sovereignty really means. I need to be able to understand the words of our elders so that when I'm placed in that role, I'll have better, a better opportunity for moving us along with a great understanding and the wisdom that, of those that have come before us. We've got some really bright and talented uh, young people that are working, and they're already leaders in their own communities. Many times that's out of necessity. They don't have any choice but to be leaders, and they're stepping up and doing it, and we're really proud of them. You know, I think that we have great role models. The, this organization has been around. It's the longest, oldest Indian organization. Because of them, we're here. If it wasn't for the past leaders of NCAI and all the tribal nations, we wouldn't be here. So I think the new generation owes it to the old generation to honor them and respect them and thank them for what we have today. I'm, I'm sitting here, an educated young man with, um, with, with, uh, with, with a lot of opportunities in front of me, as well as all our children throughout, throughout the country, and it's because of the past leaders. And so it's a really good time for, for Native youth to be coming up because uh, in the past, you had to kind of choose which identity you were going to be. It was like you were either going to be Native or you were going to be an academic or a professional. And, and you had to leave one at the door when you, when you walked in. And uh, now uh, there's a space being created to where you can assert your, your ethnic identity. You can feel good about that and even bring those values and those perspectives in to contribute to the way that you perform, whether or not that is professionally or as an academic. Right? Although I wear a shirt and tie, I'm still full red man deep inside. And someday when this world is gone, the Indian nations will return, will return. Welcome to our region, our territories, and our homelands. So much of what we do, we take for granted, but when we have the opportunity to showcase who we are, our people, our songs, our dance, our culture and tradition, it always brings a renewed sense of pride to who we are. It's so much part of our theme, Footprints into the Future. And I remember Fawn Sharp, who is their current president, last year I had her give a speech and the thing that I liked the best about it was she said, we make decisions today about what of our cultural and traditional values we take with our future. AT and I demonstrated that. We're having a contemporary meeting with tribal leaders talking about core issues in our communities, but we didn't forget our ceremony, our welcome ceremony that's been part of all of our cultures for time immemorial. Exclusively for the best interest of the National Congress of American Indians. Thank you. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you.